Dowagiac always has a festival around Steve's Run, and every year we discover something really cool and really different. This year, Cass County has uh, an exhibit, and it's a house that's part of the Underground Railroad. And uh, what's your name? Kathy LaPointe. Kathy is going to tell us a little bit about the Underground Railroad and the house. Well, we are members of the Underground Railroad Society of Cass County and one of our, with, with a mission to really explore and to tell the story of the Underground Railroad, primarily around the village of Vandalia, uh, Penn, Calvin, Porter Townships. And it's a story of the Quakers that came to this area and as well as many free black families and they all worked on the Underground Railroad to help over 1,500 fugitive slaves, or we, which we refer to as freedom seekers because they wanted freedom like anybody in the world wants freedom, well, um, to we help them to Canada and other points along the way through the Underground Railroad. Very active in this area. It's an untold story. We were formed two years ago to try to tell this story and um, and we have. Um, what we've developed a, a self-driving tour. There are ten sites on this. You can find it at, at the Underground Railroad marker in the park in Vandalia. And wonderful. There, like I said, ten sites. We're adding two more. We're doing research all the time to tell this story of the Underground Railroad. Um, one of the, uh, another primary goal we had when we formed this society is to to purchase the Bonine House. And this is the home of abolitionist and Quaker James E. Bonine. It was built in the mid-1840s. And uh, James was a station master on the Underground Railroad. And the reason he's called a station master is because um, freedom seekers were housed in uh, his carriage house across the, across the street. And both of these structures are iconic Everyone has been past them. They know there was an elk farm right next to the house. It was uh, MDOT's first state park, a turnoff. Kids grew up in this, you know, it was, it was there till the 60s, and there was actually elk roaming around. So um, this house, it's at uh, the corner of Penn and, and uh, M60. You probably passed it many times on your way to and from vacation spots or, or you know, locals certainly know the area. We, we bought this house in... Um, December of 2010, and we're renovating it to turn it into a museum, a community meeting center, an education center, and a focal point for the Underground Railroad in this area and um, internationally. This is something with international appeal. We hope it brings, we know it will bring, certainly tourism into the area. All of Cass County would benefit. And um, so we're very excited right now. We're raising funds to do phase one, which is to repair the foundation, which is in dire need. That actually will start in, in in August. We've got all the engineering reports. We know this house is absolutely salvageable and uh, so we will start that. I have, of course, I'm optimistic, but I, b I believe we can do this uh, probably a two-year window before we're actually, our office is in there and we can start using this this wonderful home um, as to achieve all our goals. Well, you know, it's so exciting that the Underground Railroad itself is, is it's all the stops on it are usually part of a, a path. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not just in random places. What puts this spot, this house, and this um, part of this tour in Vandalia, along what path of the Underground Railroad is it? There were, there were two, um, uh, two what, what do you call it? Illinois and Indiana. The, oh, lines. There were two lines that, 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 merged, mer that merged in, uh, in Vandalia, and they were from Illinois and Indiana. And these were, these were Quaker, the Indiana line was called the Quaker line because this is the, the Quakers left uh, a lot of their homes in the Deep South because of the question of slavery. They were adamantly opposed, of course, to slavery. They came up through Indiana and up to Michigan because Michigan was a free state and established a community uh, and, uh, and welcomed fugitives to this community, gave them five to ten acres of land, let them build cabins, let them have their own gardens, a community, a school. It was, it was unheard of even in this country and, and many uh, fugitives decided to stay in the area because they felt safe. And, but of course, they're also what the slave catchers from, most of the people that came here were from Kentucky and slave catchers from Kentucky would come and of course try to reclaim their property. And, um, and that happened, one of our famous incidents was called the Kentucky Raid, and that happened in August of 1847. And you can read all about this. We have a wonderful mural in Cassopolis depicting the Kentucky Raid. Uh, when you do the self-driving tour, there's also information about Cass County and the Underground Railroad, the Kentucky Raid, and of course membership in uh, URSCC and become a friend of the Bonine House. So there is, um, they just, Vandalia was so involved in the Underground Railroad that Henry Clay 
on the floor of the U.S. Congress called it a, a hotbed of abolitionism. It was very, very important. It's so nice to hear about another place because we're familiar with, with Cincinnati. There's a museum there. And um, there are quite a few places uh, around the Toledo area. And then, of course, there's there are the statues looking across the Detroit River into Windsor right. that, that are right. they're a huge feature of the Underground Railroad. And it does take a physical structure to bring people's attention to it. Indeed, indeed. You're right. And the, the Benign House, we think, will become that, that focal point for this area. We just had Underground Railroad days. We had over, it was, the house was open for the first time in 10 years. We had over 500 people through the house. It was very exciting. We also did tours of all the local spots. Um, our Underground Railroad went from uh, Vandalia to, to Flower Field Schoolcraft up that way, then toward Battle Creek and, and Marshall, Battle Creek, and on to um, Windsor. And uh, many, many stops along the way, of course. We're talking about the two lines coming up, one from Indiana and one from Illinois. Our logo does depict that and, and how they came here and then simply went east to Detroit through many, many small towns along the way. Usually they traveled about 12, 12 miles per night. Oh, it's, it's scary and just to think about it. So yeah. congratulations on a fabulous cause. I'm happy you have the driving tour because I'm pretty sure we're going to be taking it on our way home. Wonderful. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate your consideration. <laughs>